And uh, Ellen, I'll let you take it over. Okay. Well, I'm just going to start. And actually, you did some of the, you just said some of the things I was going to say, just a little <laughs> history about. Preempted you. Um, yeah, that's great, though, who we are. And um, just a couple things to add to that. Um, the Adler Arts Center, that the David Adler Cultural Center, which is our, um, our legal name, uh, was put on the register for historic places in 1999. So, you know, part of our mission is to really, um, um, you know, is historic preservation. So um, that being said, um, there's a lot of challenges with that. So um, over the years, it has been a little confusing because we are the David Adler Cultural Center, which is our legal name. And then in 2007, um, the, the board of the directors at that time decided to make a name change to the David Adler Music and Arts Center and designed a whole new logo and you know a lot of different things. Um, doing a lot of research thinking that the cultural center really didn't um, describe who or what we did. And now over the last probably 10 to 12 years, we really struggled with that name because first of all, it's so long and we really feel like we're a community center. So we were really trying to um, you know, get that part in. So not only people that study music art would, would want to come here. So um, I'm going to pass it on over now to Ellen, our marketing director, and uh, she's going to share with you um, how exciting our new branding is and why we came up with the Adler Art Center name. So I'm gonna turn it over to Ellen. Hey guys, um, is it possible? Am I cool to share my screen? Is that cool? Yep. Awesome. Um, so yeah, just a little bit of backstory. Um, when I first started, we were the David Adler Music and Arts Center and there had just been some confusion I think for the community as to who we were. Um, and not only just confusion about like who we are, but with our visual identity. So we had a lot of different variations on, you know, past logos. We had a lot of different colors. We had a lot of different things. There was no guidelines that uh, were in place really. We had a lot of cool things, but they really didn't kind of match up. So you know, in the community, if we'd pass out a flyer, um, not everybody would immediately say like, oh, this is the center. They'd be like, this is, I think, that White House on Milwaukee Avenue, but <laughs> I drive by it every day and I've never been in. Um, so we really just kind of wanted to um, create a narrative, you know, really think about who we are, um, decide what we want. And um, basically in 2019, we decided to do a big rebrand and it's really been, uh, a process. So I kind of wanted to walk you guys through it a little bit. It's been really successful and um, just kind of showing you here. Let me pull up my share screen. Um, is this working? Can you guys see these old logos? All right, awesome. So this was our, um, you know, like original David Adler Music and Arts Center logo. Um, as you can see, it's kind of busy. It's um, only one color and it's got our kind of um, classic look of, of one of our coach houses at the center. So we've, we've loved that logo for a long time, but it really was a, a bit busy. We've gone through a lot of variations. So this is our kind of next step to clean things up, which was our kind of shift towards a square name. Um, which is just David Adler Center. Um, and then there were also kind of all these variations on our logo when we would show our 30th anniversary or when we had our uh, 100 year anniversary, we would just kind of make changes to our current branding based on what we could and were able to do. Um, but what really kind of led to the rebrand is um, we really wanted to define who our audience is. So um, we sat down with a local designer. We talked about who is our audience? You know, who are we trying to impact the most here? And that turned out to be, you know, like children and their families. Um, and, you know, what would draw people in when they see imagery from us? What would make it seem accessible to everybody? So um, we thought about what we wanted to portray uh, to our community and started a logo discussion. We had a lot of discussions with the staff about our name 
and thought the simpler, the better. You know, the arts are all encompassing. Arts can include um, music, dance, drama, you know, art, everything. So we thought that by limiting it to three words, it's really easily accessible. It's really easy for everyone to understand. So we all kind of landed on through a lot of staff discussion, the Adler Arts Center. Um, so we went into logo discussions um, and this was kind of our logo round one. Uh, which I just think is interesting to share. Uh, we went through kind of a few different alterations. This was the first one. Um, we wanted something to be versatile. We wanted it to be a little bit architectural and abstract. So um, we started with this kind of Bauhaus design here. This is another one that was really high up on our list, um, which- Not enough on the screen yet. Is it not oh, showing? It didn't come up, Ellen. It's not come up. And we're not seeing any of these. Oh, oh no. All seeing is a listing of your um, listing of your um, yeah. images. Hold on. I think you just need to open the PDFs. Oh. There you go. You see it now? Yep. Yeah, that's better. Sorry, this is uh, new for me. <laughs> um, so I went through a bunch of our old logos. I'm sure you guys weren't able to see those. But anyway, they were all very kind of uh, similar, very busy. So this is what was our goal to um, start basically uh, a new a new logo concept. So this our first design was really Bauhaus inspired and we really wanted to include figures that could be used in different ways, but that still represented maybe an artistic letter. So as you can see, these kind of look like AAC here. Um, so this was one of our first logo designs. This second one was really something that we loved um, and kind of liked the fact that it, it, all of these different variations had some sort of abstract view of AAC on them. Um, this was our third look. Our fourth, which is really kind of where we, where we landed, we changed the font a little bit here. And then um, our fifth look. So here's kind of an overview of, of where we were when we first started the redesign. We wanted to do something um, that was simple, that could really grow, and that we could really see for years to come that would be very um, not of the time, so timeless, I guess you can say. Um, so basically, uh, when we were doing these logos, we narrowed them down to two through a lot of communication with our staff and with our designer, just about who we are. Um, so let me pull up one other thing here. Sorry, guys, I'm, I'm a newbie to sharing screens, even though it's like we've all been doing this for so long. You guys able to see that? Yep. Awesome. So um, once we had discussions about the logo and where we wanted to go, um, we started to create a narrative. So I think that's hugely why we've been so successful is that behind, behind everything that we've done, we've really kind of wanted to um, talk about community and the arts and what that looks like in sharing it. So um, what's interesting about our brand guidelines is Jeff and I, the designer, wanted to kind of Im like impart that narrative throughout so that I'm sure you guys have all seen branding guidelines, but ours really are kind of foolproof, which I think has been hugely successful for us in our marketing efforts. Um, so just kind of the what. Um, the first portion of the guide defines our visual aspects, so including our logo, our color palette, our, type, our typography. Um, so um, our, our basic kind of uh, go of everything is that simple things brought together create beauty. So through our logo, we kind of use different design elements and we wanted to take kind of cross sections of the letters AAC and create something a bit abstract using that so that we could put it in a lot of different design elements of what we're doing, whether it's a poster, whether it's a flyer, anything that we put out, um, we could use elements of that. Um, same thing with the color palette. This is kind of what we wanted to. We wanted it to be imaginary. We wanted it to be inspiring, whimsical. And like what we really noticed is that these colors have really helped us with kids. They really like it. <laughs> it catches their eye. It makes them really interested. It's a lot of bright energy. But if it's something that's not geared towards kids, we have, you know, Hampshire, we have cassette tape, we have options for really everything that we could need. 
Um, and just kind of explaining it here, you know, we wanted something that was bright and imaginary and that resulted in kind of a balance. Um, so this is the palette that we came up with. Um, these are our fonts. So we, we kind of discussed simplicity when it came to fonts. Um, but really, really want to get to is this, which is our, our mosaic. So this kind of informed a lot of what we did with the branding. So the elements of the mosaic are all of these shapes using our color palette. Um, and so, you know, something like this, which we talked about a lot in our discussions when we were doing the rebrand is that we wanted our community to feel that they could come together at the art center to join in relation to one another and see the beauty that is Libertyville and that is this building. So we thought that these mosaic elements really encapsulated that and kind of, they're all different shapes, they're all different sizes, they're all different colors. And that's what a great community is like. <laughs> um, so we really wanted to show that visually, which is what we came up with when we came up with the mosaic. Um, so then as far as the how, it really, informed everything that we did from that point forward. Um, so as you can see, our logos, we were really specific with where those could be and how they're designed and how, or how they're uh, displayed. Um, let me pull up this. So as you can see, these shapes are informing our design. So our narrative throughout has been, you know, creating different things using all of the different objects and all the different people of the community that we're hoping to, to bring. Um, but this is just kind of an example of what we sent to our staff. We're really clear about what we are putting out now. So everybody really does have to stay within our branding guidelines. They have to stay within our fonts, within our colors. Um, and everybody that works for us has a copy of this and that informs what they do when they're putting anything out to the public. Um, so as you can see, you know, different elements of that mosaic, there's only three here. There's a big one in the corner here. We're using a couple here. And you can tell that it's from the same organization. Um, and so, yeah, that's kind of our, our first phase of, of the, the rebrand. And um, it informed a lot of, of what we do. Um, and not only that, it really informed a lot of um, the sub branding for everything that we did from there on out. It was a weird time, you know, we, we um, launched our brand in March of last year, which was a fun month for everyone. Um, but, but what we really have noticed is, is that it's um, creating so much interest, you know, people are really interested in the graphics that we're putting out. They're really interested in the design that's going out. And when you do have good design behind your marketing and branding efforts, we found that we are able to kind of, um, we were, we're spending a lot of money in a lot of different ways trying to um, market everything with, with different people. And so we kind of narrowed that down and really um, cut our budget, didn't try and spend as much money in different areas, but really start to identify who we are. And just by, um, you know, creating images on social media that are within those branding guidelines, we've seen an increase um, of 93% of people reached. Um, we have post engagements up uh, 11%, which for us is really good. And then page likes are up by 125% for us. So, and that's without even doing, you know, a ton of like extra work. It's really just been about us identifying who we are, what we wanna be and what we wanna look like for the community. So um, real quick, I was just gonna show you one other thing. Sorry, guys. So all of it culminated to um, a community case for support. So what we did is we created a narrative about um, who we are and what we want. And it is included in our brand guidelines and um, it uses all of our branding and it's what we're able to present to the community to say, hey, this is, this is who we are. So I also wanted to pull up let me find it. Share screen. You guys able to see? Yep. Um, so even just the branding has really affected the way we communicate too. So we're using things in words like the art of community, building a more vibrant Liberty Bill. You know, it's not just about us, it's about our community and how we can be of service to that. Um, so things and phrases like community takes commitment. 
Um, and basically this is just a narrative of, you know, at the end of a busy week, a family took a short walk downtown to Festival of the Arts. They greeted neighbors, listened to their favorite local band on the Cook Park stage and watched as their children participated in the creation of a brightly colored community mural. As they wandered home, they stopped to look at the artist booths. Tomorrow there would be practices, homework and housework, but tonight in Libertyville, there was the art of community. So just kind of creating um, a narrative that's interesting to people because if, if something's not interesting to look at, why would you read it, you know? Um, so this is just a document that we put together for all of our, our partners, all of our um, administrators, anyone that's messaging for us at the center so that we all know we all know what our goals are. We all know what it should look like. We all know that we're communicating the same message to everybody. Um, and it's really informed a lot. It's, it's really helped us kind of boost social media, boost our recognition in the community. And, you know, even in creating partnerships, we were able to kind of do um, a lot of new series that a lot of people are interested in now because of, you know, the design that we're doing. Um, I want to show you guys one other thing, which is our Adler Conversations. Share screen. Um, so a lot of what we do um, is informed by the design. So even if it's not within our branding, it's a sub branding, you can see that these are shapes we've used from our logo. These are shapes we've used from the mosaic, but we've updated them to be a different thing for a different conversation. Um, so it really informs all aspects of everything new that we're doing as well. Um, so it's really helped us reach out to a lot of new people, a lot of new experiences. And um, even with our Woods project, which I'm sorry, I thought it would be a lot easier to share these, but I didn't put them in the right format. Let me share this. Um, so this is a great example of our branding put to use as well. Um, part of our goal was to really look outside of just the building and try and make a lot of the nature around the Adler Center accessible and exciting. So um, we're in the middle of restoring a large section of um, kind of the abandoned section of the woods in uh, the Adler Center property. So even just from the branding that we've done so far, it's already created a, a huge amount of interest for different organizations reaching out to us to partner with us, to give their advice, to show support. And you know, even since we released this Woods logo, which was a part of our, our new branding um, and a section of the website with a story behind what it is and photographs of before and afters, um, we've already had a lot of different local and um, you know, national organizations reach out to us about how they can help and ways that we can partner. So I think that not only does a rebrand and an exciting image and identity change a lot for your organization, but I think that it opens up a ton of opportunities for people to, to get visible eyes on you. So um, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm a little all over the place because my Zoom, <laughs> my sharing screen wasn't what I was planning on. So. Um, that's really, I think, kind of most of what I wanted to share with you, but I know I would love to answer any questions or if I didn't make sense, clarify anything. <laughs> any questions, you guys? No, it's all very interesting. The, putting all that together, there's quite a bit of work. Yeah. Um, Rebranding is a big deal. Time. <laughs> Ellen, Ellen, you've encouraged me to go back and look about rebranding with my company because I've had the same logo for 30 years and it says what we do, but we're branching out. So yeah, makes me think about doing that. Thank you. Sure. Yeah, it's, it's very, it's been a really interesting process for us, you know, it's, and each step has kind of naturally informed the next because we have, we did go at it so organically and really had those open conversations about, we're really just wanting to get more eyes on it. So how, how does that happen with kind of the trends that are happening in design right now, the colors that are trending, looking at um, timeless design so that trends don't go out of style in the next 20 years, like we saw with our old logos. So 
yeah, it's been a lot of really deep conversations, but in the end, I really think it's, it's a hundred percent worth it just because of what we're seeing with the return and what we're getting. Great. Enjoy it. It's really a pretty amazing piece of property because it's um, yeah. 11 acres. It goes all the way back to all the way back to the Des Plaines River. And there used to be a gazebo back there. The village re uh, commissioned a gazebo for, for the park by St. Joe's. So that's kind of the re replica of what that gazebo looks like. But the story was, is that Catherine Adler would go back there and sketch and sit in that gazebo during the summertime. And just, she enjoyed the property so much. But um, I was up there with Amy and, and Ellen and, and some of the people from the village when they were, we were walking through the woods trying to decide what was going to, how this wooded area was going to be reconstructed. And thanks to, there was a young man that was going to become an Eagle Scout and that was his project was the restoration piece. And then Mike Graham from Landscape Concept was the, jumped in and, you know, was a, was a large part of identifying the trees and knowing what trees to take down and it's it's a pretty and the Audubon Society was in on it as well, so it was it's quite a project and you can already start to see, um, particularly now that it's winter, that there's that density that was back there is kind of going away and it's um, it's gonna it'll be quite a it'll be a really nice project when it's finished that's for sure to really enhance that uh, property. But if you've never had a chance to walk through that building, it's it's a neat little old farmhouse, um, well kept. Um, the roof, the rolling roof textures and things of that nature are, are really kind of a neat aspect of what, uh, kind of what David Adler was. I mean, he was quite a renowned architect in the Chicagoland area. So uh, it was really great to, it's great that the villages retained it and it's great to have Amy and Ellen and the staff there to make sure that it goes on a day-to-day -day basis as well. So they do a great job up there. So anybody else got some questions for them? And thanks for asking us to do this. We're really um, oh no, we're, happy, we're very happy to have you guys here. It um, you know I don't think we've had anybody that's gone through rebranding, so it's kind of uh, it's kind of interesting to see the process that you went through because I think there's you know any every business has got to reinvent themselves at some point in time. So you know that process is important, and uh, you know you can be a guideline for other businesses that want to do that. So you know, thanks very much for being with us today. Thanks for having us. Yeah. And if you guys have any questions or um, anything on the rebrand. Yeah, if think of anything while, while Bruce is doing his presentation, just put it in the chat and we can address them at the end of the, at the end. So, but then thanks again, you guys really appreciate it. You guys are great partners and we really appreciate you being with us today. So Mr. Hamelblau, I will uh, turn it over to you. I guess you've got some tips and tricks on some social media. Sure. A um, number of different things have come up over, over the past uh, months, only, only, actually in the last two months, um, three major things have happened in the world of social media. Um, my first one is called uh, YouTube Shorts. Uh, with that, it is YouTube's version of TikTok and Instagram Stories. And what they are are short videos, less than a minute, that uh, are vertical videos. And for, for the longest time, uh, YouTube has always fought the, the vertical video um, trend, but now they're embracing it with these things called shorts. And what's really interesting is that if you start producing shorts now, you're actually getting in on the ground floor. It's not, it's basically like I'm, you're joining YouTube 10 years ago or 12 years ago. Um, YouTube is really pushing these. And like I said, they're, they're less than a minute. Usually the sweet spot is roughly between 15 seconds and 25 seconds. And they can be cute videos, interesting videos, but you got to tell your entire story within that time frame. It's not like a uh, Instagram story where after the first one finishes, it plays the next one, then plays the next one. So you can actually, you, in some cases, you can combine uh, video clips to make a full story. With this, uh, your video ends up on what's called the YouTube short shelf. And I posted a few last week and uh, over the weekend, um, two of my videos really took off. Uh, the average view count on my interview videos, my long form videos have been maybe a hundred views on, on a video. Both of these are uh, have around 2000 views and they all came in pretty much within a, a 24 to 48 hour timeframe. 
So if you're in, if you're comfortable with video and you really should be, be actually if you're doing all, all this zooming, uh, create short content, helpful content, interesting content, uh, post it to your YouTube channel and, and share it out. Um, the key part, the difference between a short and a regular video is that it is vertical and it has a hashtag shorts. And that way YouTube knows that it's a short. If you need help with any of that content or concept, uh, give me a call, uh, put my number in the, uh, in the chat. Uh, the second thing is called Clubhouse. Um, right now Clubhouse is only available to iOS, which means iPhones, iPads, um, it does not work on your laptop and it does not work on Android. And Clubhouse is basically a um, audio only uh, conference center. And I can actually pull that up and uh, show some samples of that. Let me see. Oops, wrong, wrong computer. I'm pulling it up on the wrong computer. So actually that's why I started my uh, my control room. There we go. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and come on, trust. This work this morning. There we go. Okay, so this is what Clubhouse looks like. When you come in, you can you can join uh, clubs, and it's a great way to find people. You can also start following people. So this shows a list of people who I'm following, and if they're in what room they're in. So if I'm looking for a room, like um, for instance, tomorrow. I've got a live stream and my guest is Clubhouse Jeff. And we're gonna be talking more about this. I met him through this platform and he was very informative and very entertaining. And he grew um, his Clubhouse, if you can actually click on his profile, he's got 8,800 followers. And he's been on the platform since December 21st of 2020. And so, and he's actually, and he's following the maximum number of people you can follow, which is 2,500. They may uh, up for that, but it, it basically adds his profile um, is a great way to connect. Um, Andy Foote, if you're at all uh, active on LinkedIn, Andy Foote is, uh, is a LinkedIn expert. Uh, I, so if you're looking for information, uh, follow him, read his blogs. And again, so Robbie McMillan, or McMillan he's a uh, comedian. Uh, from out of Canada. And again, so you've got these people who are basically offering a lot of good content. Uh, Jennifer Ginnimer, who is a wife of Jeffrey Ginnimer, um, is on this as well. And you can see when, the la when they last logged in. Bob Berg, if you don't know who he is, he's part he wrote the book, uh, The Go-Giver. And he kind of coined the phrase, uh, people do business with uh, those they know, like, and trust. So again, and then, so basically if you, go, if you go here, this offers you your rooms. Uh, so in this room right now, there are 1300 people and 97 people are actually on the um, speakers uh, uh, shelf. Uh, videographers, here's a group of, uh, that's going 24 seven, 365. They just hand it off. Uh, one person leaves, another person takes over and the room stays open. And so again, there's a lot of information. Forbes Riley uh, is very is very informative. And the, the the topics you are delivered is based on who you follow and what your interests are. And the rooms range from, like I said, 1,300. Elon Musk was on a few days ago, uh, and, and and I think there was several thousand people in his room. To the extent that other people just kind of created their own room and just played what was, list, what was being heard in that room into their room. So again, there is, it's a lot of good information, um, film, TV, NFTs, 
Breakfast of Champions. So I can actually um, go into, let me, let me go to one with a, on here. So if I go into this room, Heart. it opens up. <laughs> <laughs> Not the so here it says, uh, yes, that's it, there we go. Recording. So okay. actually we recognize that we're recording the what's session. Your, what's, your, what's your favorite swim stroke? And so you can actually see this. And then you yeah, can actually uh, leave as well. Go. So uh, the third thing is you've heard of this platform called Twitter. Well, Twitter is, has introduced a new th um, concept, which is kind of based on Clubhouse, which they are calling, they're calling spaces. And so a space is, um, if, you, if, you, if you haven't logged into your Twitter account lately, uh, you may notice these flashing or, or, or pulsing uh, purple icons. These are spaces. So it's the same thing as, as a clubhouse. So you can actually go, join, a, join a room here. And then you, so it asks if you join join the space. You can take, tap, tap there. So you go to the app store, don't hit open. You actually hit the Twitter icon and it's so, gonna show updates. And then once you do oh. that, you'll be able to see because I see everything now yep, instead of right. test room four, and then you only have five emojis instead of six. And so basically, there are two levels of this. Mm, okay, yeah. There now it does say update uh, level. So let me update and then the this speaker really level. And pop back. Yeah, that's yeah, what that's so what, you what can, I. That's you what can, I can request um, to, be, you to speak. So with you can the, hit these um, icons. Uh, your your updates are on the on so the schedule, so it won't just automatically update things in in real time. But rather than like you probably have a, a built-in timer or schedule uh, a, a where DM, it'll look into tweet, it, or copy and then, But like if you really want to get an immediate update, you got to go manually to Twitter, and then you can leave uh, the room. You know, Twitter. so it, this is actually this opened up to both Android and to iOS. So what, no, no matter which platform you're on, and again, if you get on on the ground level. Um, you really can create a, your, your community and reinforce your community because again, right now there's only, there's only, only three groups of people I'm following are doing this. And so if you're looking for this, um, it's very informative. If, if you wanna learn more about Twitter, uh, follow this person. Her name is Madeline Sklar. Uh, she does what's called a Twitter chat right here. Um, tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern, so that's the 12 noon our time. So if you follow her, she's Madeline Sklar, um, all one word. And then here's a, so let me unshare this for a second. So the, and actually one other thing is what I'm getting here. Um, if you also notice on top here are these icons. These are what's called fleets. Um, this is more like stories. So if you're, again, if you're looking for um, the, what was on Twitter or on, on TikTok um, or Instagram. So here are some, uh, some professionals and they share their, their personal life as well as their, uh, their, their business life. So um, there's a lot more, uh, let me, Turn this off. How do I, I'm not, I'm not sure which button I'm... How about the top, Bruce? Is... Well, no, actually I'm on three different computers and, and it's behind my laptop. There we go. So there you go. I, so um, raise of hands, how many of you still have a Twitter account? Thanks, Bruce. Any questions for Bruce? So you got a half a dozen people for, for Twitter, still on Twitter. Twitter has changed a lot um, in the last few months. It's not your, it's not your, your father's Twitter or your, your kid's Twitter. Um, it's still a, uh, an active source of, of news and content. And it's a great way of discovering new people and having new people discover you. Like I said, uh, going into, into Clubhouse and going into um, these Twitter spaces, 
I'm actually getting one-on-one -on -one conversations with people I normally would not ever be able to get, get access to mm -hmm. uh, because they're expanding on their new platform. And so they're the, they're the, um, the early adopters. And by coming, by being an early adopter, you actually are on the ground floor. And like I said, to have a one-on-one -on -one with Elon Musk or even a, a, a one-on-ten or 10 on one with Elon Musk is, is a rare opportunity. Great. Any questions for Bruce, you guys? Hey, Bruce, um, so what target market do you think this is better serving? Well, the Twitter, basically Twitter is still the way Twitter is. Um, you know, I remember in the early days of the social media, they were saying how LinkedIn is your office, Facebook is your family, and Twitter is a cocktail party. Twitter is still a cocktail party or, or a bar where you can just hang out. And actually this is even more of a, of a cocktail party because you're actually talking with other, other people in that group. So um, target market is whoever you want your target market to be. You've got people on Twitter who are ranges from what, um, 13, to 90. Uh, this morning I was in a, in a, uh, in a space with uh, Kim Garst, who is a social media influencer. And she just got on um, herself uh, on the platform. And so her target market is women 35 to 55. So whoever your audience is, um, you can actually reach that audience. And actually, there's one other thing about Twitter. Um, if you're following, let's say, over a thousand people, and your Twitter feed starts to get really hectic, there's this um, device, this element of a Twitter called um, called list. And if you haven't made a list, it's a way to categorize your your followings and, and your in your feed. And what Twitter just did was it enabled you to pin your lists or your favorite lists to the top of your phone. So if you do this real quick again, um, share, here we go. So here on the top, this is my home feed. So I've got about 4,000 followers and I'm following another 4,000 people. And so this is what my Twitter feed looks like on a daily basis. But if you look here, I've created a list called GLMV Chamber. And I have pinned that feed to the top of my, my, feed, my, my Twitter feed. And so now um, I can just feed, I, I've added people to that list who are members of the GLMB chamber. And I haven't updated this in a while. So it looks like the only thing I've got is GLMB chamber, uh, putting their post AAA um, and a few other uh, friend net. And the way you add someone or, or, or delete someone from a, from a uh, list is you go to lists and then you can follow other people's list. So if, uh, if my, GLME chamber list is public, you can actually follow that list and see who's on that list. So I've got 62 members on that list and I can edit the list by adding and deleting people. So manage members, so I can add or remove. Okay, so this company went out of business or moved away, I can remove them. Um, this person um, isn't a member of the chamber anymore. And so I can add those people and then suggested so here are people who I'm following who may be uh, in the area who I can always add to my list. And the advantage of a list is like I said, it cleans up your Twitter feed. So as, as opposed to looking at a thousand people's tweets a day, I'm now looking at 62. And not all, not all 62 people are, are tweeting every day. But if I wanna really hone down my feed. Um, I can add anybody, any number of these to my, uh, to my lists. And, you, and it was also nice, 
is if you don't you don't have to actually follow the people to add them to a list. You can just add them to a list. So Bruce, it sounds like you know with all the different opportunities uh, going from your office, LinkedIn to your family and Facebook and and then your Twitter for the cocktail hour and and, and all the clubhouse and everything, it's uh, gets a little bit mind boggling about how do you keep up with all of these? You got 4,000 followers, you're following, you know, 8,000 people or, you know, 2,500 are following you. Um, how do you manage all that and actually do your job? It is time management. Um, you can allocate a do- an hour a day. Jess knows. Jess has, has an answer. Okay, go ahead, Jess. Hire me. Hire her. <laughs> That's right. Um, one thing I do, uh, the one thing though, is you cannot hire someone to do your clubhouse or your Twitter spaces. You have to be there yourself. You have to be in person to do that. But yeah, um, it is a, ma- hey, it's a matter of time management. Bruce, is Clubhouse still invite only? Yes, but I've got seven invites. So if you're on iOS, just- I have, it al- I have it already. I've already been on it. Um, right. But I personally, but what I use Clubhouse for is more business growth, personal growth with um, influencers and, um, and speakers and things like that, where you can, um, as far as business opportunities, I don't personally use it for that. I don't feel like that's where the platform is at at this point, but definitely listening to people who have do startups or business owners, women business owners, personal growth, things like that. I find it very informative and like easy to listen to when you're working or, you know, walking around the house or, you know, or something like that. It's a, very interesting as a different platform. And also, since, and since you already have Twitter, it's not an exclusive club. You can you can join a space on Twitter um, just by having the app. Um, if you want to actually host your own space, um, I can put the uh, the link in the chat, and um, it's just a matter of filling out this form. Do you have to have Twitter to, to get into Clubhouse? Well, that's yeah, that's a low bar, but yeah, you do. No, you don't. Have, Clubhouse is, is an entity all by itself. Twitter Spaces, you do need a Twitter account to get into Twitter Spaces. So, in order to host a uh, a space, um, you can fill out that doc. It's a very simple form. It's basically what's your name, uh, where do you live, and what's your Twitter handle. And the, uh, uh, a month ago or two months ago, the platform had only 300 uh, people available in the Twitter spaces. Uh, they just opened it up. Uh, the first uh, level, there was, um, they added 5,000 people. That was about a week ago. Uh, this week, they just added another 10,000. Um, and I'm starting to see some bugs in the system. So uh, they, they, may, they may slow down the, uh, the rollout to host but it's still unlimited to join. Okay, anything else for Bruce, you guys? Okay, Carol, what do we got going on? I'm muted, whoops. I just put up our Twitter page here so everybody can see it. Um, we're on Twitter. We've got 939 followers. So that's pretty impressive. And I like posting on Twitter. I think it's really fun. It's a little bit of a nice alternative from um, kind of the seriousness of LinkedIn and some of the stuff that goes on on Facebook. Um, It's just right to the point. It just tells you, you know, this is it. You you can remember it. It's easy to to do. It's easy to post. And you can put links up. comments, you can retweet, which is really nice. Like here was the Visit Lake County restaurant rally. I saw that this morning and I went in here and retweeted it, um, like it, however, you know, you wanna do it, you can share it. Um, So it's kind of cool. I posted all our things from our our gala. Here's our virtual um, C4S group. And, you know, it's it's a really nice platform. So get on there, follow us. And Bruce is a great resource to help you. You know, we can help you as well. Um, so yeah, so that's Twitter. 
And if anyone that's your your assignment for today is get a, get on Twitter Twitter and follow Bruce, follow Chamber, follow Mike Luby at Carmel and whoever else you know that's on there. In fact, I even saw Aki Jackson, who I haven't followed yet, so we can catch up. Um, so that's Twitter. Of course, we're on a variety of different sites, and I do spend a, quite a bit of time just posting. I try to make all the posts a little different on all the sites. Otherwise, people say, oh, I already saw that. You know, if it's the same thing everywhere. So kind of the new thing now is don't automate your posts. Make them a little bit different so it engages people a little bit more. And they're more likely to engage with you if you just change it up a little bit from you know site to site. So that's kind of just a little tip on that. And then I just wanted to thank Amy and Ellen. I love working with them. Um, they're amazing. And I wish I could take class at Adler Arts. <laughs> um, the place is beautiful. And we've had a lot of committee meetings there for our um, art festival that we do with them or that they do with us. And um, it's a really great place. So check it out if you haven't seen it. So finally on branding, um, brand refresh, your branding should match the quality of your brand. Good branding draws your customers to you and keeps them coming back for more. So keep that in mind as you're putting out your messaging and your posts and um, keep it consistent if you can and um, just, just you know, watch your branding. So with that, um, we've got Friday is, come on over on Friday and join us at Conversations. We've got um, Mitch, be at Ban Venue, Ban Venue from the Small Business Development Center. He will be doing an update. They've got a ton of great programs for small businesses and they're all free. They're on our calendar. Um, there are a variety of different topics. I can't wait to start going to these things because you will just learn so much. And he's gonna update us on what they've got going on Friday at eight. So come on over to that. And then um, we're gonna try our first live St. Patty's Day Mixer, so wear your green, on March 17th over at um, Scotty's on 21 in Vernon Hills. So this is kind of a in lieu of our um, holiday mixer that we didn't have with the village of Vernon Hills. We've kind of changed it over to this mixer um, for St. Patty's Day, and it's free, but it's limited. So if you want to participate, please, you have to RSVP. Um, no walk-ins will be available. So um, we are limited though on the number of people that can be there. Um, that, and then our golf outing, um, save the date for July 15th. Um, that's our golf outing and it'll be at White Deer Run again. We'll be sending out the save the date information on all that. So um, with that, I think <coughs> we can just mix and mingle and <laughs> chat it up. <laughs> yeah, thanks everybody for being with us today. Um... Before we go, I've got a, and, I, and because it's, it's St. Patrick's Day a week from today, I've got a little St. Patrick's Day saying for you. May your troubles be less and your blessings be more and nothing but happiness come through your front door. So um, you guys stay on if you want, um, talk a little bit. But again, thanks, Amy and Ellen for being with us. Bruce, as always, thank you for your your social media stuff. I it seems like it, every week it changes. It's amazing, and uh, you're right, right on top of it. It makes it great to have you be part of our uh, be part of our group and and do this on a monthly basis to keep everybody well informed. So, uh, with that, I'll uh, I'll sign off and uh, tell you guys have a great day, and we'll see you soon. I'm with the Russian Media Group, and what we do is with digital radio social net social media and networking we connect our clients to the large affluent population from the former soviet union in the chicagoland area